G'day my friends, Marty we're here from Marty's Garden. Yes, spring is here on the calendar officially anyway. The time of rejuvenation and regeneration. It's when we can start acceleration. Acceleration in the soils, plant growth and everything unreal like that. And today that's what we're talking about in this vlog as we build, create and make stuff and show you where we're up to. And hopefully you can implement some of this too at your place so you can accelerate your garden into explosive, healthy growth at home. Enjoy the video, guys. And remember, you've got to slow down just a little bit to speed up. I don't mind to slow down anymore I don't mind the sound of my shoes on your floor I don't mind selling out or playing cover song Just as long as friends and family sing along And I don't need more money or a faster car, no Don't need a magazine to call me a superstar, no Gonna take this little house and make oh, it's been raining. Awesome though. You need that rain to hit the acceleration point. You need water, you need oxygen, you need all these things. So how do we get there by slowing down? Oh, I had to put that towel on because my seat's wet. Hopefully it doesn't seep through to my pants while I'm shooting this, this video. Anyway, let's keep it rolling. Keep the camera rolling. How do we get to that point? The acceleration point by slowing things down and then getting acceleration point speed up to that explosive growth now it is a system it does take time and it does take patience but once you get there it is just absolutely amazing and I've been there a couple of times but being a renter very difficult uh, to get to that total point where you're really getting that explosive growth. Now in permaculture systems, they talk about the seven year cycle. So once you get to the seven year cycle, plants start turning over, you start getting, they start reproducing on site and less work. Now, for me, that's just a little bit too long. And I like to work in smaller spaces. So market gardens, you know, urban garden sort of thing, micro farms, which I like to call them, which I've got here. And, you know, help urban gardeners as well produce organic food at home. We'll learn how to grow organic food at home so they can get the best quality results. Minimal inputs, maximum outputs. But at the beginning, we do need to increase our inputs. Now, one of the things about acceleration growth is carbon you see they're all talking about it all this stuff you know over the internet and you know you got to, the carbon issue as well carbon gets stored in the ground and our plants will take it down in the ground through photosynthesis and different methods and store it in there it's a big carbon sump and guess what the soil life needs that carbon to be alive and that's one reason why I'm always promoting composting and then mulching on top. And so by doing that, we're getting the carbon and these nutrients down into the soil profile very early and allowing the nutrients from the water, when the water hits the compost, to actually then hit the roots of the leaves and start the acceleration point instead of waiting for nutrients to come out of a little tiny shell or whatever and then hit the water plant and then plant goes oh thanks I'm getting a drink I'm getting some nutrients but it's got no photosynthesis system going on with with nature just as nature in plant and intended you notice that whenever you've got a bare bit of land and you've got a bit of rain and you know there's you know some greenery around we're not in the desert a weed pops in there you go oh that damn weed well guess why that weeds there guys because we're not supposed to have bare earth we're supposed to actually cover the earth put microbes into the ground and keep the soil alive. We have this, what well, they call it, a living web. Now, in one handful of soil like this, of compost, good quality compost, or say a rainforest soil or something like that, there is more microbes in that 
then there are people on the planet. And guess what, guys? When we are working towards the acceleration point, we're building up our microbial system. And as we're doing that, and we're feeding our soil, and we're feeding our microbes in the biology, they're growing, they're breeding, they're feeding on each other, they're eating on each other, they're doing this whole thing, this whole dance underneath the ground. Well, I don't think they're doing the tango, you know what I mean? <laughs> but they're, they're breeding and feeding, doing the whole thing, and we're keeping them alive. And as they find better homes, because we're improving our soil around us, we're using worm farming techniques, we're using Korean farming techniques, what are we doing? We're improving that soil. And as we're doing that, we're improving the web life. Now, in web life, they have found fungi kilometers away attached to what they believe to be called the mother fungi at the beginning, right to wherever they found it kilometers away and it's all interconnected and i was talking about this 10 years ago and people were going mate you are just a total loop well i won't take my hat off it's going to go hats off to me because they have the science now to measure these things they can actually know that the dna is exactly the same as the fungi they found in that spot two kilometers away it's the same fungi it's connected and fungi helps plants uptake nutrients so as we are building this soil web and say example the fungi is growing out through our garden and spreading out through our garden we're helping it do that guess what the sugars are being shared among plants now I want to tell you a really cool story I had a papaya tree right and I grew it underneath now some of you may remember this papaya tree going back four years ago or something like that and it grew unreal and it was right underneath like my little back veranda was a concrete slab was and the sun went down on that slab the roots went underneath and it just warmed that concrete slab through the day the roots were under there and it just and then that concrete slab where the roots were under just cooled off through the night but keeping warm and keeping this papaya tree warm Anyway, I got beautiful fruits off it, and it got so big, I had to remove because I was worried about it getting too much under the house and, and, you know, just creating problems in the space. Anyway, I collected some seed off it, but before I did that, I sprouted another papaya uh, a little bit further away from it. I wanted to run a trial. I thought, hang on, I'll do this one. It, it's going to take a fair bit of growth until it gets to the, the sun, so it'll need to be at least three foot high before it reaches the sun, but hopefully then it will start to fruit. And I'll have the same seed from the mother plant before, and I should do just as well. Well, anyway, guess what, guys? It actually started fruiting in the shade. Now, this doesn't happen, right? Fruit does not... Well, you need sunshine for photosynthesis to create flowers and get fruit. So I, I was scratching my head at first, and I thought, hang on, the fungi is obviously connected up with the mother plant, to the other papaya it knows it's a papaya that somehow they're talking to each other through the fungal network system now don't think i'm totally spinning out here right because i'm going to tell you really what's going on and the science is there to prove this stuff now guys right so anyway it was starting to get fruit and i'm like this doesn't happen still in the shade hasn't reached the sunlight yet in height why is it bearing fruit anyway i figured it out i'm like sharing the sugars the mother plant recognize the seed from that the, the, the DNA or whatever it is and started feeding the baby and I was like wow it's sharing through the sugar system uh, through the fungal network and I was getting pretty good sized little papaya fruits on it and I was like and it right time to get rid of the mother plant and I'm thinking oh if I get rid of the mother plant maybe the little little guy will suffer in some way, I hope not. Anyway, I had to move it, so I cut down the big papaya, and guess what, within a week, that one from the mother plant that was getting fed, dropped its fruits, dropped its leaves, started looking really not good. And I was like, wow, there we go. That experiment that sort of just happened by accident as I was observing what was going on in the garden, it really, really happened, guys, and I wish that I had taken time to film it but it's such a long process that I can really only tell the story here so anyway it, it eventually it caught up about six months later it hit the sunlight and then it, 
It did, it did okay. It didn't do as good as the mother where it was in a beautiful spot underneath the slab and things like that and getting that warm roots through um, the cooler periods. So anyway, let's get back to where we're up to here. And I hope you enjoyed that story. If you've ever experienced anything like that or you're reading anything like you're starting to understand that now, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. It's not to do with pixies or fairies or anything like that. This is the real deal, right? So what we're doing is we're reaching acceleration point. We need to start linking everything up. Now what I'm doing is I'm actually, Shirley and I, we started another uh, bay in the back of our micro farm. And so we can make more compost for our micro farm to sell also and for our garden here. And we're linking everything up. So that's in the right corner now. And that will feed an avocado tree and a papaya tree. And then it will link up around the corner and eventually join up with our, our permaculture system, right? And so as the fungi will move up underneath that area there and all that sort of nutrient from when it's raining and things from the weather compost areas and sitting there, that's gonna start fertilizing that spot. We've put carbon around the outside as a barrier that will start breaking down. That'll start attracting in other big earthworms and, and building that soil web and start breaking down and we can just turn that over the whole time and rebuild, turn it over. And if one day we don't wanna do that anymore, all that compost will just already fed that spot so we're creating an acceleration point we're accelerating that point and then linking it together so eventually this whole space here has a large fungal network underneath and the microbes that are bred in one area will move down the line through the soil profile through the compost underneath the mulch all that type of stuff and spread through here and we're just breeding out a huge underground living system you see, we're continually looking, because we live above the ground, we're continually looking around above the ground. And there's something alive more than us. Well, like I said, there's literally billions in one hand, big handful of an alive compost system. And there are people on the earth. So get that, guys. When I was studying oh, in the year 2000, they said one sort of like little cube, little square cube, was had one million microbes in it. Now they know there's even more, like we're talking over 20 years ago, that's what they could get in the microscope. They can see more and more and they just keep finding more and more and more and more. So as we build up and take care of our soils, we actually start reaching that point. Now I'm hoping that sort of makes sense and you start to get some understanding in it. That's why I worm farm. I do that to create the nutrients and to get the worms into the system. Now that system that I've shown you, uh, I was just talking about what Shirley and I just built, oh, Mozzie, <laughs> the new system, that actually has two big worm farms connected to it. We'll be moving those compost worms through that system and then that will be our high-end product that will be going into our mixed compost with all that biology, all the worm castings, you know, the fungal network moving through and, and, and the mycelium stuff, then going into our compost to go out to the locals to help them grow food. So we're essentially breeding biology on site here and then sharing it out with, with the people. Now, as they come in and purchase some of this, they'll get some of that. And also what I'll do is they'll start breeding their own systems and working in their own gardens with that soil life and that soil health to start off acceleration point at their place. And then we go bang, 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 bang. We're building all these beautiful gardens around the place and they're building all these beautiful gardens around the place and we're helping the world become more healthy and as the world becomes more healthy or your environment becomes more healthy you become more healthy i just don't think you can really really beat that so anyway let's get back to this song maybe a blooper at the end if you want to watch it and we'll just keep working on today on this acceleration point stuff and we are about to talk about soils coming up so Hang in there guys, I'm going to show you a soil profile in a minute. Well I don't mind the slow down anymore I don't mind the sound of my shoes on your floor I don't mind selling out or playing cover songs as long as friends and family sing along And 
And I don't need more money or a faster car, no Don't need a magazine to call me a superstar, no I'm gonna take this little house and make a home And then I'll never have to face my nights alone There you go, this one more to go, bring the wheelbarrow It's in my heart, I hear you speak And on my face I feel you breathe Next to me Two by land, by air, by sea And that is how it's supposed to be Now And that much I can see Now Pulling loaves of bread down from the shelf And how rare it is that I stay up past twelve In the backyard we are going to start a garden On top of that last one there that one's a light one. Give us a wave. Huh? Give us a wave. Wave? Yeah, wave to the camera. <laughs> so it's the next morning and I've had to think about this, how I'm going to talk more about this acceleration point because I don't want to be getting too boring and I know it's not this five magical steps to giant grow a giant pumpkin which you know I think those videos are fun and they're exciting and they're entertaining and they keep people engaged but at the end of the day are they really helping people get to where they want to go and how many people are actually implementing these things because they say how all these ways to do this but they're not teaching you the basis of it all of organics is getting the soil right, building up your microbes, building up your fungi, building up a depth of soil. We're gonna put a soil profile right here, boom, right there, right now. You see the top soil at the top. We're building our top soil. So I call this the soil bank, right? And so every time we're building this top soil, we're building and establishing more homes for microbes, better places for the fungi to travel through, and we're connecting it all through the garden so they can get through, we just add Okay, one part of the garden first, build it up, and then join it and connect it to the next part of the garden so the microbes and fungi and everything can move through. And as we build this topsoil like this, it's getting deeper and deeper and deeper, we're building more biology, and every time it rains, the beautiful thing is, right, every time it rains, it stores more water. So if we get a drought period, or we have to go away on holidays, we have to do something or other, it stores more water. And as we're building the soil profile properly, it also holds a lot more oxygen. It means a lot more worms are going to come in, a lot more soil. Life is going to start expanding on itself and accelerating, and you get ultimate growth. Now, once you get to that stage, you can't go wrong, no matter what you try and grow. Now, obviously, we do need to caretake it because we become caretakers of the land. And then we start letting nature do the work. So we're just caretaking it, letting nature do the work. And man, explosive growth. Now it just rained here last night, so we got a bit of water in the subsoil. I'm building my subsoils here. And this soil profile here shows you what a sub a profile is. Now what I'm going to do, we're going a bit far into this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it off here and create a part two and talk more about this soil profile and the acceleration point and how you can get there into the future. Now, I know it's not super exciting, it's not super sexy, but as I said before, if you get this right, you can't go wrong and you're gonna grow lots and lots of food for the rest of your life. All right, have a great day. Happy everything. And we'll see you at the next video real soon. Oh, just watch the blooper at the end here. Bye for now. Oh, God bless, guys. Love you all. Yeah, I'll put it on that twilight for the shoot at night for the video. Shoot at night. Oh, shoots at night video.
Look, there's the garden and stuff down there and that. Maybe we will put it at the end of the video. Just like after like the bloopers. Bloop, 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 bloop. You go, hey. They go, Marty's just losing it now. <laughs> it's fun though. <laughs> it's right at the end because everyone's finished watching the video, so it doesn't matter. <laughs>